Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the all-new 2014 Acura MDX. All right, uh, we're standing here with Jim Keller, who's the chief engineer slash large project leader of the 2014 Acura MDX at the 2013 New York International Auto Show. And the first time we met Jim was probably about, what, eight or nine years ago at the Ridgeline launch in San Diego. And he was responsible for the, he was the APL for the 2006 Ridgeline, responsible for the chassis development, is that correct? Yeah, we, in, in our world, we have two, two AOPLs, essentially there's one for powertrain and then one for the, re oh, actually three, I should take that back, there's three AOPLs. There's one for uh, overall vehicle dynamics, there's one for the powertrain and one for the rest of the car. And I was the rest of the car guy. Right, so, um, and he's worked with Frank Palak, who was obviously responsible for the previous generation. That's correct. And uh, you know, working with Frank and Gary Flynn, I'm sure you, you, you know you know what's come to be expected from uh, yeah. the, the light trucks at Acura. Those are two good guys to work with. They both taught me different things, you know, so I, I think I did learn from, from two guys uh, all the right things I needed to know to build this car, make it a great one. Yeah, so the previous generation or current generation uh, MDX has been a fantastic vehicle for Acura, sold really well, seems to be really popular in the market. Where do you start to make this one better? Well, I had to start with that car. I mean, that car, as you said, is a very successful car. It's very important for Acura. We got a lot of loyal customers and we want them to buy a new car. But the starting point with that car was uh, kind of the driving dynamics. So with this new car, I wanted to take that driving dynamics to a new level but yet I wanted to inject some sophistication that I thought was missing in the, in the previous car and uh, give the car a little bit more sophisticated feel and uh, driving dynamic. Uh, so driving excitement, sophistication. Uh, I wanted to extend the family friendly utility of the car uh, with this new model and then I wanted to greatly improve fuel economy. So those are kind of the four top aims uh, that I had for this new, new model. So, starting with the dynamics, obviously one of the easiest ways to improve dynamics is to cut some of the weight of the vehicle. That's right. It, it's, uh, it sounds easy, but it's not so easy to take uh, almost 300 pounds out of a car. The way we were able to do it with this car is everything under the skin is all new. It's a completely new platform. The previous generations of MDX had a platform that was shared with the uh, Honda Odyssey. This new car has its own platform. From, this is the first application of this platform, and it was designed specifically for a luxury CUV. Uh, we've also employed a lot of alternate materials, things like magnesium. The steering hanger beam in the car is made out of magnesium, uh, so it's lighter than what we had in the previous car. And we've also applied, uh, in addition to high strength steel in the usual places, we've got a, a one-piece uh, door ring on the outside of the car where it's a big unitized piece of hot stamp material. Uh, and I don't think any other competitor or any other company is applying uh, hot, stream, or, uh, hot stamp steel in the same way we've done it with this new car. That's great, so lots of advanced materials. Uh, right. Aluminum hood, I believe aluminum fenders, is that correct? Uh, the fenders are steel, the hood, the hood is aluminum. Uh, a lot of it is uh, just going back and optimizing the sections uh, of the car. And we've done it without adding a lot of cost. Uh, so we were able to take out a lot of the weight without you know, going to really super exotic materials throughout the car. So it's more about balancing the right materials in the right locations. So while reducing the weight by 275 pounds, you've also stretched the wheelbase, improving interior volume, right. as well as improve the safety rating. You expect this to be a top safety pick plus? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, this car is probably, in my opinion, the safest SUV on the road. Uh, it was designed uh, for the new IIHS uh, small offset barrier test and you can uh, open the door of the car after that test and the door works uh, perfectly well. So it's just an incredible structure. Even though the car is lighter, it is better safety than uh, the outgoing car and I think better than any of our competitors on the market. Now it's interesting, um, you, you've got the new Moving on to the powertrain, you have the new 3.5 liter direct injection. You've reduced the uh, engine displacement by approximately 200 cc's. Um, lost a little bit in terms of horsepower and torque, but you've picked up performance right. with the weight offset and obviously fuel economy. Can you talk a little bit about the, the new engine family? 
Yeah, it's uh, it, the basic engine architecture is shared with the new RLX. It's uh, the Earth Dreams technology engine, three and a half liter direct injection. Uh, as you said, horsepower is, is down slightly from the outgoing car, but uh, mid-range, the low-speed torque is up. And coupled with the lighter weight that we get with the new platform, dynamic performance overall is up. And fuel economy is up significantly uh, with the new car. Um, the, it was achieved not only from the, the powertrain perspective, but throughout the car there was a big effort to reduce the friction and things like the, the brakes, the transmission bearing drags been optimized, uh, tire rolling resistance was also optimized for, for this application, and the overall vehicle aerodynamics are dramatically improved over the old car. So much better wind tunnel performance than the outgoing car, and all those uh, uh, you know, in the end, work out to a really, really huge improvement in fuel economy. So, not to get too technical, but we're assuming it's probably a slightly different camshaft or intake. Uh, it's uh, it's completely different than the old car. This car has got the VCM technology, the variable cylinder management, uh, so it operates in partial cylinder mode. Going Sorry, I'm, I mean compared to the RLX engine, which is 310. Oh yes, it's been. Of course, this engine has been uh, tuned specifically for the for the MDX. Even though the architecture is is uh, pretty much the same between the cars, it's been tuned just specifically for this car. Okay. Um, and there's six-speed automatic transmission is carryover. Uh, it's not completely carryover. The basic architecture is the same, but the transmission itself has been gone through and been optimized again for friction reduction. And we've also improved the shifting performance, uh, particularly in paddle shifting mode. The transmission responds faster than uh, it did previously, so which makes the car a little funner to drive as well. Okay. Um, now, for the first time, you're able to order an MDX with a front-wheel drive mm -hmm. um, layout. And the uh, sport handling all-wheel drive system is also available. You want to talk a little bit about um, the new offering? Sure. Uh, Two-wheel drive uh, is a very popular um, sales point in the Sunbelt region. And previously, we didn't have a two-wheel drive car to offer uh, the, in that area. So a lot of our competitors offer a two-wheel drive. And in those areas where people know they're not going to drive in the snow or go off-road or anything like that. They'd much prefer a lower entry price point and also a little better fuel economy. So uh, we elected to make a two-wheel drive version with this new car. And the two-wheel drive uh, I'm really proud of. It's, it's actually a really fun car to drive. The front suspension was all designed from the beginning with the two-wheel drive model in mind. There's zero torque steer with the two-wheel drive even though you put nearly 300 horsepower down to the ground. And there's absolutely no electronic engine management that has to inter interact when you're accelerating. So you get the full full engine response through the front wheels with very clean and precise steering. The um, all-wheel drive version, or the all-wheel drive uh, uh, powertrain itself, is uh, largely carried over. It also has some friction reduction in terms of uh, you know improve the fuel economy. But what's new with the all-wheel drive is, whereas the old car had uh, torque vectoring, which as you know only works when you're accelerating through the corner, we've uh, now coupled that uh, system with the Agile Handling Assist, which uses the vehicle's VSA or brake uh, system to effectively apply brake torque vectoring. So as you go into the corner, the, the VSA is actuating, and, and normally VSA only works when you're in kind of crisis mode. but yeah, but this way we're doing effective. We're using it to help set up the car because that that critical turn-in portion is where you know really makes a difference in how the corner is executed. So you get that brake torque vectoring going into the corner, and then when you flow off the brakes and onto the power, then the torque vectoring from the acceleration kicks in. So it makes the turn more seamless. Makes the transition from straight to turn much more controllable. And uh, not only on a, on a track environment, but also in the uh, snow or low mu type conditions, the car is, the car is a blast to drive. Quick question, was it engineered to accept the, uh, the new sport hybrid system? Uh, today I can't talk about that, uh, but it is, uh, it, it is something you know, in our arsenal of technology that uh, we're looking at for the future. I know there's a lot of new stuff in the interior. Maybe you can take us yeah, around and show us some of the features. Sure, yeah. 